everyone, my name is Cayenne. I'm so excited that you're here. Um, today I'm just going to be doing a little book haul for you. Um, I honestly don't buy a ton of books normally. I usually like to get my books from the library. But so far in October, two big things have happened that have got me getting more books than I normally do. So the first big thing is that uh, my birthday was on October 13th. I just turned 26 and I got a couple books as gifts and I also bought myself a couple books as gifts. If you are not buying yourself birthday gifts, I think that you're doing it wrong. And you should be, because I always do. I always buy myself birthday gifts. So I bought a couple gifts for myself. Um, and then the other big thing that happened in October is I had to get my blood drawn, which is like my number one biggest fear is needles of any kind. So when I did it, I was like, all right, you can do this, and then you can go to Books A Million. So <laughs> that's what happened. But um, let's get into it, and I'll show you the books that I got. Uh, first one we're looking at, this was a birthday gift from my mom. This is We Unleashed the Merciless Storm by Taylor K. Mejia. Um, I, this is the, si the sequel, the second book to uh, We Set the Dark on Fire, which I do also have on my bookshelf over there. Um, I read it last month, I think in, in September, or maybe like maybe the end of August, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. And so I'm really excited to read this one. The only problem is, is this one just came out, so it's a hardcover, and my copy of the first one is paperback. So I think I'm going to get rid of the paperback and get a hardcover so I can have like the matching set. But I'll definitely be reading this in November. Very excited for this one. Um, if you're not familiar with this series, obviously I'm not super clear on what happens in this one, and since it's a sequel, I wouldn't want to tell you because it would probably spoil more than I would like to spoil it for you. So I'll just give you a little summary of the first one, um, which is there. It's a um, Latinx-inspired world in which um, the entire country is on an island and in the center of the island is a mountain and the further up the mountain you go the more privileged and rich and high in society you are and the further down the uh, mountain you go and closer to the sea the lower class you are including there is a um a big wall that goes around the center of the island so if you're outside of the wall you're like you're not a second class citizen you're like beyond a second class citizen um, and our main character danny comes from outside of the wall and there is no immigration from outside the wall to inside of the wall, but her parents successfully snuck her over the wall to be a part of... My cat is yelling at me. <laughs> what? Can you hear that? <laughs> He's telling me off. Um, her parents successfully snuck her inside of the wall so that she could have a better life. And what that means inside the wall is that um, you become a Primera or a Segunda. So those are the two wives that every husband has. Um, the Primera is more of a partner, um, kind of almost in a business sense, whereas the Segunda is the child bearer and more of the feminine half of a relationship. So Danny goes to school and is highly successful and then at the beginning of the novel um, it's right when she is graduating school and she's going to get her placement as a Primera. It's a sapphic romance, so it's really fun. It's kind of thrilling. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. I think I rated the first one like four stars, um, so I'm excited to read this one. Okay, so this one uh, my fiance got me for my birthday. It is called Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara, or Mara, I'm not sure, Mara Fitzgerald. Um, and I picked this one up at Books A Million. I actually first heard about this one because I signed up to win it in the Goodreads First Reads giveaway, but I didn't, I didn't get it, so I was like, all right. I'll buy it. <laughs> um, it is really um, a beautiful cover and a nice hardback. And it is um, about Emanuela and um, Alessandro, who are um, both gay, but they marry each other for power and for prestige. Um, but it is a fantasy world in which there is a um, water monster, I guess, who, um, when you get the omen on your skin, you have to give yourselves to them. And Emanuela gets the omen and she just like chooses not to, but, um, that's never done before. And it's a horrible thing. And everyone's going to die of thirst. It seems like, um, I usually try not to know too much about this one. And this one, like I said, I'm, I'm not super clear on, but again, it's sapphic. Um, I'm into it. <laughs> it's got this beautiful cover. Like that's really all I need. Look at that. Um, so that's this one. And then my fiancé got me another one that I've been really wanting to read. This one's called Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Um, this is a novel that I've been hearing a lot about. I actually just watched um, Meg's video of her reading it, and she really liked it a lot. Um, I'll link her down below. I love her videos. And um, I'm just super excited to read this one. This one is about a girls' school, 
and there's some sort of apocalyptic it seems like a sickness where the girls end up all alone and um horrible weird symptoms happen i'm not really clear on what uh because i think it's just very strange um and this is another sapphic one so again right up my alley and i always love like scary horror creepy that sort of thing so i'm really looking forward to this one this one's also like top of the list for my november reads because i've i've been looking forward to this one for a while also oh my gosh it smells good um i don't know how is it is it by it like wyatt is that how you say your name because it's b-y-a-t-t buy it i guess i don't know um, then we get into the big stack of books that I bought for myself. Um, the first one is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. Um, this one I have heard hyped a lot, so you've probably already heard about this one. That's what brought me to pick it up. Uh, if you haven't heard it hyped up, I don't know whose videos you're watching. You're not watching the same ones I've been watching. But um, it is supposed to be really good. I've been hearing, hearing like exclusively good things about it. Honestly, you tell me sapphic, and I'm like, okay, I'll buy it. So I don't know what all of these are about, other than that they're sapphic. <laughs> is that a bad thing? Okay, so this one is about, we have three main characters. We have the first sister, who is described as a comfort woman for warriors, which, personally, my understanding of the word comfort woman, I hear the, um, I hear that phrase, and I think of the Chinese women who were put through all those horrible things, like I think is touched on in The Poppy War uh, by R.F. Kuang. I haven't read that one yet, but I think it talks about that in there. Um, I don't know if that's what this is about, um, but she doesn't have a name. She's just called the first sister, hence the book. Um, and then there is Lido, who is a soldier. And then there is um, Hiro, who is an assassin. And it seems to be all of their stories um, wrapped up in this war. Um, I'm just really interested in this one because it doesn't seem that there's like everyone I've heard talked about it has been like this is really good I'm not gonna tell you too much about it. So I'm gonna follow <laughs> that pattern. I guess um, The next one I bought for myself. I've been meaning to get for a while. This one is how to be an anti-racist by Ibram X. Kendi um, I almost said Kennedy like the Kennedy president. No Ibram X. Kendi um, this one is one that was really popular in May June when all of the Black Lives Matter movement first started um, and I have just now gotten a hold of it because it was one that I didn't want to check out for the library I wanted to own for myself. Um, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. If you haven't heard about it, it's really what the title says. It's supposed to be super powerful and I'm really looking forward to reading uh, this one and learning as much as I can. Um, next one, this one I've actually started. This is what I'm currently reading. This one is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Uh, I've read the first 50, what page am I on? I'm on page 58, and it's really good so far. Um, it is about Noemi, who is a young, like, socialite in Mexico in the 1950s, and um, her cousin gets married to this guy and then seems to be kind of losing her mind and is begging for help and is begging for Noemi to come be with her. So Noemi um, goes to see her and is staying in this real creepy mansion where there isn't electric lights and they have to be silent like all the time and she's trying to figure out what's going on to protect her cousin Catalina and protect herself. Um, the vibes of this one definitely the best part for me so far. It's like very unsettling um, so I'm really enjoying this one and it seems like it's gonna be a really quick read. It's only like 300 pages um, so I'm gonna breeze right through this one. I may even finish it tonight, definitely tomorrow if not excited. Um, Blaze Wrath Games. This is actually one, um, when I got my blood drawn, this was the one that I wanted to buy. Like, I went in to buy it, and they didn't have it. Um, so on my birthday when we went in, I double-checked to see if it was there, and it was the last one on the shelf, and I just, like, sucked this right up. First off, the cover of this one makes me want to die. I just, <laughs> I love the color. I love the art. I love her hair. I'm, like, so into the cover. Um, it's called The Blaze Wrath Games by Amparo Ortiz. Um, this is one that like just came out, I think, I want to say on the 10th. I don't know, very recently, early in this month. Ooh, let's see what the hard, the, the cover looks like. Oh, it's white. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> it's so pretty. I just love this like almost Pepto-Bismol pink and then the clean white and then the, the blue. Ugh, I just really love this cover. Okay, so this one is about Lana Torres from Puerto Rico. I'm really getting a lot of like 
Latinx stuff. I just read Cemetery Boys last month, uh, Mexican Gothic right now. I have, um, what, what am I talking about? The We Unleashed the Merciless Storm coming up. I've really been enjoying all of it. It's been a lot of fun. But anyway, um, she's from Puerto Rico and she is going to compete in her very first and actually Puerto Rico's very first um, Blaze Wrath Cup, World Cup. And it is like a dragon riding competition and it's her dream, it's her sport. But um, a, another group from her team starts to wreak havoc, it seems like, and she's trying to figure out like, does she want to support the games? Does she want to support them? I don't know. I'm excited on this cover. <sighs> I can't get over it. I'm very, 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 very excited for this one. This was the only one out of this whole stack. This one in Mexican Gothic were the only ones that I was like planning on purchasing. So you can see how they just multiply like rabbits. Um, next up, this was a total impulse buy. Um, I have been listening to the podcast Welcome to Night Vale off and on since I was in college, maybe even high school. I don't know when they start, but I finally like got totally caught up recently in the last year. Um, and I've totally caught up with it and um, I like books and here I am, you know, I was like, might as well have read everything else on the planet. Um, look at the buy colors too. We love to see it. Beautiful covers. I got a lot of beautiful covers this, this haul. I got a plan it this way more often. Uh, but this is the first Night Vale related book. This is Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. Um, if you're not familiar, Welcome to Night Vale is a long running, um, very famous podcast. In my mind, it was like the first story podcast that I ever heard about, um, as opposed to like news or anything like that. Um, and it's just creepy, weird, spooky stuff. Um, they have, I believe, three novels out now because they have this one. I know they have the uh, Faceless Old Woman Who Lives in Your House. And I think there's one in the middle that I don't know um, what it's called. But I usually am kind of like iffy about um, non-book IPs becoming books. But it's written by the same people who wrote the actual story and it has really good reviews. So I'm... I'm impressed and I really want to support them right now because um, they're having trouble because the May was their touring season um, when they go around the, the country and do live tours and that's how they make most of their money and obviously that didn't happen so I wanted to make sure and give them a little bit of support. I'm sure that I'll like this one. Um, I'm sure that I'll buy the other two in the series. Um, I'm excited to read this. Last but not least, this was another impulse buy. Um, I try not to buy from Amazon a ton, but this was uh, Prime Day. It was on sale for, I think, like $18, and it says retail, it says $34.99. So I was like, okay, I've been hearing people talk about this, um, and I was sold. Um, this is actually my first owned graphic novel, not including Watchmen. I mean, I guess Watchmen is a graphic novel, but it's more novel than graphic novel, I feel like. So this is my first true graphic novel. This is the book one, Paper Girls, so it's a bind up, I think, of the first, like, Ten, five, I don't know, a bind up of the first certain number of issues of Paper Girls, which is by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chiang and Matt Wilson and Jared K. Fletcher. I could not have read that without reading it. I'm not, like, I couldn't have just said that. I'm not that smart. Um, but from what I've heard about this is it's kind of like Stranger Things, but girls and they're Paper Girls, and that's really all I need to know. Like, I'm sold. The art is so, let's just, like, look at that. It is so pretty. I love like the vivid. I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. Um, this is my pile of books. The hardcovers are digging into my thighs right now. <laughs> it's been a great birthday. Um, the other big thing that my fiance got me for my birthday was my very first book box subscription. He got me a three month subscription to Unplugged um, and the first one will come at the beginning of next month. Really excited for that. I'm just excited. I have a lot of reading to do. I have read, I think, seven books so far this month. Um, started on Mexican Gothic, and I have one, two, three, four. I have five more that I plan to get read this month, so I need to get on it. I need to put all these guys away. I have a color-coded bookshelf for the most part. Uh, for all my TBRs, at least, is color-coded, so I need to put these all away because they've been in a stack waiting for me to film this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you hated it. Tell me all your thoughts. Um, I'm just trying to make friends here. I just wanted to be a part of the booktube community and say hi and, um, hopefully talk about sapphic romances with people. <laughs> That's really what I'm in it for. So thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe if you would like to, and have a great day, guys. Bye!